Good morning, Golly Lama from the Space Coast. It's about uh, 6.30 here, and today's, that's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today's video uh, is going to be on solar charging the E2000 LFP connected to one EB3000 expansion battery using two Tecron 200 watt foldable portable solar panels which will be integral in my van build out for some off the grid camping uh, but today I'll splice together a uh, bunch of videos over the course of the day just to monitor the input and see how things go. It should be a mostly sunny day. There'll be some various clouds. There'll be some times of full sunshine so we can see the, the effect of that on the solar charging. And we'll be charging into the two DC charging ports um, and those are twelve to eighteen volts I mean uh, thirty two volts to ninety five volts um, the maximum input on this unit is twelve hundred watts what we'll be inputting today is 400 watts. I have two, uh, two panels, um, but you could potentially add six panels to get to 1200 watt input if you wanted to. Um, so pretty soon, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to get my ladder out and crawl up onto my roof of my mobile home and position the panels for the initial charging. I'll come back in, I'll, I'll hook the unit up and, and we'll get an initial read on a very early morning sunshine uh, effect. So I will see you shortly. Okay, so I have the panels on the roof and the sun is just literally, uh, it's bright out already, but the sun is not quite over the roofs of the house or the curvature of the, uh, the planet. Uh, for you flat earthers out there, um, just go to the ice dam at the edge and look over the edge if you need to. But for me, I'm talking about the curvature of the planet and how it affects things. So I have two MC4 connectors. Um, here's the, uh, the solar wire coming in from the roof through my window. I'm simply going to connect... each one and I'm going to run these on independent charging outlets today just for the heck of it to see what happens if I don't have good results after a period of time I'll hook up the propane generator and pop that into one of these uh, DC ports charging ports and and I'll connect the two solar panels so I'll be able to to charge using both methods at the same time. But here we go with no apparent sunshine outside. One in. It's as simple as this, really. I'm gonna get some extension so I can run, run these over to where I usually keep the the, um, the battery bank or I can run it into my office if I need to and 
And as you can see, without any sun hitting the panels at all, we're getting <laughs> two watts of input and we're starting the battery back at 52%. So I'll be back in a little while when the sun comes up and we'll see what happens. So it's a little after 10 here. Um, and as you can see, we're getting some pretty good wattage out of the solar panels now. Um, the sun's ducking in and out of the clouds. So the wattage is variable. But as the panels heat up, the water wattage increases. As it ducks behind a cloud, uh, the wattage goes down. We've been up as high as 275, and we're not even at peak sun yet here on the space coast so i'll be heading up to the roof to readjust the panels in an hour or so and as the earth rotates around the sun and we'll be back with another report in a few hours uh so i did a little experiment um it's a little after 1 p.m eastern time uh still a Pretty cloudy day, uh, sunny day with variable clouds moving back and forth. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> the, the charging wattage right now since the sun went over to the other side of the house has dropped down a little bit. Um, but the other thing is, is that I switch the configuration of the panels up on the roof and I also switch the configuration of the wiring um, so I pair them up and I have them charging into one one port and I that may have contributed to the drop, although it didn't drop that much. I mean, I was only getting about 265, 270 watts um, when the sun was full out, which it's not now. And so what I've done, according to the manual, which is online at Pecron's website, links below, support manuals. E2000 LFP. I've got the top configuration hooked up. And I don't know how good you can see that, but so since the top configuration hookup, it's been a little less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that and go back to the single and see if that makes any difference. So I have this little tool here to decouple the the um, the MC4 connections. That was graceful. And the other one. So all that does is push the little grabbers. Then I'm going to rehook up the uh, individual connections and get the panels going on an individual basis again. One in each DC 10 port. It's impossible to hook these up the wrong way, by the way. Even for me, the ancient an elderly Goli Lama. So one is in. And on its own, I mean the sun's a little different right now in the afternoon, so it's not not as powerful as it was an hour and a half, two hours ago. But I'm getting a 106 watts out of that single one. 
And maybe there's an issue with that single panel. I don't know. I play around with things too much, I think. Then I pop the other one in. And the wattage begins to go up. And remember, it was right around 230 before. Um, and it's going higher than that right now. So maybe pairing them together kind of weakened the wattage output. I'm not an electrician, so if you read the uh, manual, maybe you'll find out what went on. But at any rate, I'm going to leave it this way now. We've gone from 53% up to 74%. We got about five hours left to charge the entire thing up to 100. Maybe I got enough time in the day. Maybe there's enough sunlight, but I think as the afternoon drags on, the sun will somehow weaken and the wattage will be affected. But I'm happy with this boost of about 20 watts by separating the panels out. And maybe I'll do a little more research to find out why that happened. Be back later. So, <clears throat> closing in on 3 o'clock, maybe it's like 2.45 and getting 252 watts. <clears throat> in the last uh, segment, I saw that pairing the panels dropped the wattage by at least 20 points, 20 watts, dropped the power. So I decided now to unplug one, leave one in and see how that worked, and then unplug the other. And what I found was interesting. So right now I'm at 251 watts. I unplug one of them. I'm only getting 109 watts out of that particular panel. Keep in mind that both of these panels are right next to each other on the roof in the same position. 109. Goes back up to 251. I unplugged the 109 one. And I get 143. Is it possible that I have a faulty panel or that some of the cells on the panel are not good? Hard to say. I'm not an expert, but. The charging continues. I'm happy with it. It's charging up. I mean, I'm getting use out of the sun and we're up to 82%. Got about three and a half hours left to go of charging and I'm sure the wattage will drop as the sun sinks down in the sky. But um, maybe I'll contact Pecron and let them know that there's a discrepancy in one of their panels. Check in closer to the end. Well, folks, I'm going to uh, wrap this up, making this the last mini video in this day-long solar charging event. I'm going to basically call it successful. Um, it's around 5 o'clock now, so we've been going for 10 hours or so, and different times of day you see that you don't get a lot of wattage out of the sun, um, but that's not the Pecron's fault. Uh, it's still getting around 190 as the sun makes its way down. I'm going to leave it running and uh, tear down when I get back. Uh, I did find that one panel was weaker than the other. 
um, through simple diagnosis in the previous little session. So I'll be contacting Pecron about that. Um, but generally speaking, the panels are working. Um, another factor down here was like 88 degrees and kind of hot and a strong sun. And people who know, uh, know that heat affects the efficiency of uh, solar panels. So um, that's something for me to take into consideration too. I didn't need to break out the propane generator, which was good, uh, but um, I was able to to charge this thing right up, and I'm sure by the time I get back home, it'll be at 100%. Um, but the Goli Lama's got himself a social engagement tonight. He's old, but he's not dead. And so concludes another episode of the Pecron Solar Charging Experience. Have a great weekend, folks, and happy Mother's Day to any mothers out there. And you know what I mean by that.